make it clear to the interviewer that you are teachable, that you are here to ask questions, you are here to learn, and that you are here to be better. You're not somebody who's like, I know it all and that's it. That, that's it, I have it just, you know, like you're here <laughs> to get better and to learn. Otherwise it's like not that fun talking to you. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ilhan and today we are talking about cybersecurity interviews how to really maneuver through them, what strategies to use, how to just ace these interviews. So, and I have my notes and my boba, so let's get into it. Firstly, I do wanna make it clear that although I'm making this video for cybersecurity specific, um, it could be applied to any job. It could be applied to getting a barista job, data analyst. All these strategies could apply to every other industry or job. So make sure to take what you want and leave whatever does not serve you. So I'm breaking this down before the interview, during the interview, and after the interview, and what to do in each stage of your interview process. So before the interview, the first thing that I like to do is I like to copy the job description and I'll paste it elsewhere. So whether that's Notion, my notes app, or JGPT. And this is so that I really understand what the job is asking, what the company is asking, what the team is looking for. And so I will highlight what needs to be highlighted, really emphasize what it is that I think is the core ask of this job and of this interview and what it is that I need to really highlight of my own experience. This also helps me down the road if the job link is no longer there, if LinkedIn got rid of it, or if something happened and I can't remember what I applied to, I just like to save the job description and put it elsewhere. Once I have copied and pasted the job description, I like to really go over it and come up with questions because those are the same questions that the recruiter will ask those are the same questions that the hiring manager will ask and everybody else, right? Like the questions that I come up with from the job description tend to be 10 out of 10, the questions that do come up, whether it's a technology or a certain ability you have to have for this job. For example, if the job description says, hey, you have to be proficient at Linux, then now I can really dig into my Linux knowledge and come up with questions that might be asked of me. Um, and so even if nobody asked me those questions, now I have prepped on a technology that is super relevant to this job. And I wouldn't have done that if I didn't take a look at the job description. The one complaint I've heard from hiring managers to coworkers to recruiters is that people are not reading the job description. So they don't even know if the job is relevant to them. They don't know if the job is too senior for them. They kind of just apply, apply, apply. And so from the interview, people can tell, oh, you're not really that invested. And so we're just gonna pass on you. So you wanna prep, you wanna do the extra prep. Besides copying and pasting the job description and noting down all the things that might come up later, I like to also prep for a phone interview with the recruiter or somebody that could possibly be talking to me before I talk to the hiring manager. And so that involves just having some context behind, is this job remote? Do I have a certain certification or something that they need for me to have? All that can be screened through the phone call that you have with the recruiter. They'll be like, oh, you have this? No, okay, yeah. We're not gonna take you. <laughs> so it's super nice to be able to do all of this. So every time I'm talking to the recruiter on the phone, I have the job description up, it's highlighted, it's noted. I also have my resume right next to it so that I'm, I'm able to cross reference. Now let's talk about what to do during the interview to have a smooth interview process for anybody that's interviewing to go, oh, wow, look at you, you came prepared. You know more than me, yeah, so. Let's get into it. The number one strategy to use during a job interview is the STAR method. I'm sure you've heard of it before, the STAR method. So it's situation, task, action, result. Every time you're asked a question in a job interview, you're asking yourself, what is the situation you're going to use as an example? What is the task that, that was at hand? What, what, did, what does this involve? What are you trying to demonstrate? What is this? For situation, you are setting the scene. So for example, they may ask me, what is the time that you learned a really hard lesson? Or what is the weakness of yours? And I'm like, oh, there's this situation where I learned a hard lesson around teamwork and why teamwork is so important. So in this case, the situation and me setting the scene would look like, hey, I was in the sock, it was chaotic, there was a lot happening, everybody's busy. For the task, you are describing your responsibility. So the sock is hectic and there's a lot going on, everyone's busy, So and my number one job, my number one responsibility is to close this specific alert. For action, I would tell the interviewer exactly what steps I took 
to address the responsibility or task or situation that I was in. So I would say, well, this is the step I took. And then I opened this technology and then I looked into the alerts and then I did this and this and that. The number one lesson that I learned from using the STAR method again and again and again in job interviews is that action is actually the hardest part to explain because you're either not giving enough detail or you're giving way too much and now it's like 20 minutes later. And so you kind of have to know to give enough so that you look competent and you know what you're talking about. And the person interviewing you is not asking for clarifying questions um, so that you can get to the result. One time this happened to me and the interviewer kept asking clarifying questions around the action that I was describing. And they said, go deeper. Yeah, and I'm like, oh yeah, so then I did this. I was actually describing closing an alert. And so they said, what technology did you use? Um, so how did you know that it was uh, benign? So what then did you do? And then I realized, oh, if I had gone into enough detail, then they wouldn't be asking me this. Because now they're like, hmm, I want to know more. Why are you not saying more? What's going on? And so don't let anyone question you. Have enough juice there that people are like, okay, I know what happened. I know the situation. I know the task and I know the action that you took. Now that we're done with the situation, task and action, let's get into result because result actually people either rush to it and so they don't give enough of the action or people kind of forget about the result. And so they'll say, it was a hectic situation. This is what I was supposed to do. This is the steps that I took. Wow, and yeah, that's it. And the person's like, no, tell me what the result was. If you don't tell the person what the result was, then it's kind of like a cliffhanger. Uh, they don't know that it worked out or it didn't work out or the lessons that you learned or how competent you were in that way. Or, you know, you weren't competent and so you got competent. You know what I mean? Like you want to go into detail about the result as well as going into detail about the action. The STAR method is really effective and I personally have not met a company or a hiring manager or recruiter that has told me that, oh no, we don't do the STAR method. It, it just does not make sense. It will work every time. The other strategy that I do use is storytelling. And I do believe that the STAR method does kind of do that for you. It's a story. It's a beginning, middle, and end. You know, the climax is the action, right? And then there's the result. So when I say storytelling, I mean that every question that's asked of you, even if it doesn't require the STAR method, for example, or it's a yes or no question, you can kind of employ storytelling because storytelling gets the person on your side. We all love stories. We all love that, you know, just being part of something. And so really let the person know, hey, this is what I've had. I don't know about you, but this is... So include the person and let it flow like you're telling a story. This is where it really matters that you did the prep work, that you really read over the job description so that you're not, you're not like worried about that per se, but you're more so just understanding and taking note of what does this person and I have in common? You know, what, what makes both of us smile? Because that's who, what they're going to remember. That's who they're actually going to give the job to. And I know everybody's like, no, it's the most technical. Not really. It's that, you know, compatibility, that camaraderie, that energy that sometimes come across in a job interview where someone's like, okay, I have to hire this person. I mean, I would love to work with them. The energy is so amazing. They're so funny. Yeah, they're competent, but also I just, I just really like them. It's all down to storytelling. And you might be asking, what can I specifically do to make me a better storyteller? Make it clear to the interviewer that you are teachable, that you are here to ask questions, you are here to learn, and that you are here to be better. You're not somebody who's like, I know it all and that's it. That, that's it. I have it just, you know, like you're here <laughs> to get better and to learn. Otherwise, it's like not that fun talking to you. It's like, oh man, I just, yeah, you're smart, but I just rather just rather talk to somebody else, you know? So you want to get them on your side. And I think storytelling does that and showing that you're teachable, showing that you're enthusiastic and you know you care about this job, uh, that will get them on your side. One more thing to remember during the interview is that if you don't know something, it's okay that you don't know something, but the strategy that you use to demonstrate that you don't know that thing is very different. So for some people, they say, I don't know. And so they're, they're able to admit. For some people, they're like, well, what are you talking about? I do know that. And then they give a wrong answer. And then there are some people that are like, okay, I don't know, but I have an example where I didn't know before. And then I figured it out or I did this and this to do that. So let's say they ask about Linux and you don't really know, but then you might 
use another technology as an example to say, well, this is what I did to learn that. And this is how I built out, a, I don't know, a project or used it as a tool. And then this is what I was able to do. And because of that, I am confident that I'll be able to learn Linux. You see, you see what I mean? Of all those three options, the best in my opinion, and also professionals will agree with me, is that you say, I don't know, and you're just honest about it. However, you give them an example of what happened before when you didn't know and then you learned and this and that. Or you can share what it is that you do know, um, but I would refrain from guessing and then trying to be like, yeah, yeah, you see, I do know. Because if you don't know, then you kind of look silly. So it's okay not to know, just make it clear that you're willing to learn, you're teachable. And that's all they care about because not everybody's gonna know everything that's on the job description and that's okay and they don't necessarily need someone to, that knows everything but they want someone who's honest about it and is teachable and is able to give plenty of examples of why they can or cannot do something and now you might be asking yourself what do i do uh after the interview if you will well you know you should your storm at that you did everything that you could you're teachable um so what do you do after i got you let's get into it the first thing that I do after an interview, whether it's over the phone with a recruiter or a hiring manager or an interview or a virtual interview or in-person interview even, even though I haven't had a ton of those, um, what you can do is always email the person that you've talked to always and always and always. And about 80% of the time, I'm really sending that email to the recruiter because I either don't have the exact email of the person that interviewed me or I have already emailed the hiring manager. But whatever I do, I always send a follow-up email. I just don't worry too much on who it goes to. Just as long as you know, I sent an email. <laughs> I actually saw a debate on LinkedIn where people were like, are we still sending an e email? And then somebody was like, I always want an email. If you don't give me an email, I'm not hiring you. And I was like, mm, that's a little bit much. But I will say that um, just, just I just want to make a habit to follow up, to follow up, to follow up. And so I also don't want them to forget about me. Also, if, they, if there's one little thing that divides me and everybody else, then and it's the email, then I'm happy about that. I mean, everybody sends those emails. But in this job market, if anything can give you a leg up, go for it why not it doesn't really hurt me but if i hated emails then i might need to rethink that or i might need to choose a different course of action in regards to this whole follow-up thing and what to do after the interview i always send either a linkedin message or an email to the hiring manager once i've spoken to them and that's only usually once or twice it's not usually more than once or twice if my point of contact for the whole company is through the recruiter then i will also send the recruiter a message but the hiring manager in my opinion i just want them to know what i'm thinking and so i will either find them on linkedin or just use whatever email i have for them but i will not go on google you know and stalk them and then send them an email like i won't do all of that i'll just simply send the recruiter an email and then i will message the hiring manager on linkedin and most of them are on linkedin thankfully let's talk about in the case of you have already sent one email either to the recruiter or to the hiring manager or whoever it is and they're not replying yet maybe they're still interviewing other people how long do you wait until you follow up on your follow-up in my philosophy in the things that i have been told in my mentors advices you know anybody that i consider a, a mentor and their advice i would say once you send an email do not follow up like it just kind of communicates that hey that's that because once I start following, I just look like I'm, I think I'm losing or something like that. It's very, also, you don't want to really chase per se. It's more so, hey, here I am. <laughs> we either align or we don't. I, I, just, I just feel like, you know, clanging up their inbox when they're already busy. It's just not my thing. And so I do it once and that's it. However, if they don't reply to me within two week period, or I do get a, an offer somewhere else and I really need to update them or something has come up and I need to update them, then I'll do that. But I'm not in the game of just, you know, following up. And then follow, I, have, I have things to do, you know, I have other jobs to apply to. And even if this is my dream company and this is the only company that will ever interview me, I'm still carrying myself in a way that says, hey, yeah, I have other, you know, other opportunities out there that I have to explore. <laughs> And so that's been my strategy. I don't know. I don't know if you want to follow that strategy, but it has worked for me. So to wrap up, I will say if there's anything that you should take away from this video, it's the STAR method. 
really really dig your heels deep into it and really understand it and use it in other situations like besides job interviews because it really is a skill to have it's a part of storytelling it's the this is what happened and this is what i learned and this is who i am and this is uh so just get better at that second uh takeaway that you should have from this video is confidence confidence is everything if you don't have confidence then it might just not be that much fun to talk to you but it's okay if you're working on it it will really show and also do everything that you can to speak about things and to and to really go into things that you care about that interest you your eyes will light up you know when, when someone's interviewing you and you're really dedicated and interested and into something <laughs> whether it's linux or i don't know gardening uh it will it will show and so whatever chance you can get to show your personality you know what you care about but it's relevant it's relevant um then do it because i, I just don't see it hurting you especially that confidence that's oozing through. And of course, it goes by saying, do not talk down on yourself, to yourself, about yourself. Don't, don't do that. It's not, it's not the setting for that. These are not your friends. Don't, don't do that uh, because people will take it literally. They don't get sarcasm. They don't get that you might be kidding. Just come there ready to learn and ready to deliver. But it's okay if you know one or two jokes slip, but do not let it be self-deprecating. You are here to sell yourself. Today you are in sales. The other parting note that I have for you that you should take away is that you can do it. You really can. There's some interviews that will make you feel so silly, that will make you feel like you're in the wrong industry, that you're not that bright, or you're just not a funny person, or you're not a cool person, or you're like it will make you feel icky sometimes and that's completely normal just journal or take note of that because it doesn't really speak to you it's more so speaks to the company or how they made you feel and so don't try not to internalize it because i guarantee you you are qualified otherwise you wouldn't have gotten the interview so there's that and that's it for today thank you so much for watching this thank you so much for subscribing thank you for liking the video thank you for leaving a comment too i'm always happy to hear about videos that you would like me to make and it does not have to be career or cybersecurity related we are multifaceted so don't be scared to say, hey, Ilhan, how can you make a video on confidence? Can you make a video on coming across the way that you want to come across? And I'll make a video on it. Thank you so much. And make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And of course, have an awesome day.